Hi, it's Russ from Pro Tools Expert, and I've been playing a bit more with the uh, the Manny Marroquin uh, plugin series from Waves. I did the review last week, and uh, I said how good it was. But I've been doing some more playing with it, and I've just, uh, in particular, there's two or three of the effects that are, are really excellent for mixing. So I've got a track here. And I'm going to mix a track with with a few of the plugins just to show you what I mean. So I've got uh, uh, a drum kit and a live kit, and then I've got a loop. And then I have a bass synth and a synth. So I've got a break beat. And so I've got this kit. I've got this break beat. I've got this bass synth. I've got a mono TB303 kind of squelchy thing. And I've got this synth. Now I want to show you what I've done with it. So the first thing I've looked at, of course, is the kit, and that's where I'm starting. So I want to show you the kick drum first, and all I've used on the kick drum is the Tone Shaper, which is a, a kind of a multi, it's like an EQ and a multiband compressor at the same time. Uh, and I, I showed you that in the review last week, and it's really excellent for giving some body to a kick. So at the moment, here's the kick. And there's the new one completely transformed the sound of that kick drum. Let me just turn it up a bit for, a, for this. You can see I've used the low there, put the body in then. That's not really doing much. Then the high mid, just add the click back in. Very nice. The second one is the snare drum. I want to show you the snare drum now. So let's go into the snare drum. Now that snare is okay, but it doesn't really have much body. It's a bit, it's a bit kind of uh, flappy, a bit of treble, really. So again, using the tone shaper, still got it cutting through. And don't forget as well, I've got the overheads here. So the overheads are going to add some in too, if I add, add that back in. You can hear it's just real, put some, some, some real clout into that snare. So that's the original, and it's just a bit cracky, and, and, and the crack for some people might be quite nice, but sitting that in a mix is always harder. So let me now show you the uh, the overheads. And this time I've used the EQ. And now what I've done is rolled off a load of bottom end information and a, a bit of the mid out, because the, the cymbals were just a little bit too clacky and crashy. So put some air into them, cleaned like the bottom end out. You might want to rain that back in a bit. Hear that? Now I'm going to leave the bypass out for a bit because I, I get told off. Uh, I got an email the other day that says I, I flip between the bypass very quickly. So that's the original. There's the new one. So a lot of mids taken out because I really want the, the kind of presence of that room, those overheads, but I don't want too much of the original drums coming through. Let you play those three now. There's the original, as you can hear. The kick in particular has just got so much body now. If you've got to sub switch it on now or a pair of really good headphones, you'll hear it. Okay, let's move on now. Let's go to the break. Here's the break. First thing I want to do is just... Now one of the problems we're putting breaks with real kits, and I'll show you now, if I just put these three in. 
I don't really want much of the bottle ending because I want it to be much more crushed and much more kind of dirty. So the first thing I'm going to is this again. And you can see I'm putting a lot of the low mids and stuff in and the, the, the lows are out totally. Making it much more boxy. Less hi-fi. Going to next level down then. So let me just show you that again. I'm flipping too quick. Want all this information in. And distortions in as well. Can you hear it crushing that bottom end? Now if you watched my review last week, the attack and the release are really helpful because that determines when the drive starts to kick in. So you've got the attack of the drive. Do you want it immediately? Or do you want it further on in the sound? And the same with the release. You can have a very, very short drive or something. Near there, just much more at the back end there. Not too much drive. And again, the top end information is really being pulled out because I don't want any real top end information to that. I've got a lot of mid in. Let's see it with those two end out now. There's the original. Don't want that kick drum in there. That, that sound now. Third thing I've done then is the reverb because I want to use the phaser. So those four together now. Some nice syncopated beat going on there. Take it all back out again. That's what we had before, it's very snappy. in the reverb as well. I could put some more if I wanted to, but I want it to be quite dry. Go to the synth now. Now you'll hear straight away the thing that that synth was begging for was the delay, of course, the uh, super delay. Now what I've done on the delay, I've got it in host mode, which means that it's following the BPM of the track, which means that the delays are timed with the track exactly. I've taken it out of link mode because I want delay left and delay right to work differently from one another. So we've got some space moving around the track. The feedbacks are quite low, uh, a tiny bit of reverb in there, and then the doubler effect will give me that detune effect as well. So have a listen to this. It's the original. And the feed, so the feedbacks are quite low because I don't want it hanging around too long. If they were too long, there'd just be a lot of lot of stuff going on all the time, and I'll just play you that with a feedback sap. Just back that off a bit, just take them back. The other thing as well is I've got the high pass and the low pass on because what I want them to do is I don't want the delay to sound too like the original. If these were back down here. But what I want to take a lot of the bottom end out and top end out, so there's hardly any, and we've just got that kind of mid. Even further if we want. Now say, so these are now not linked. If they were linked, you'd get this sound. Let me show you what the double is doing now. Just detuning it a bit. 
is the original. Bit of chorus effect, then the reverb. Now, not too big. There's the original. And again, not too much effect. Don't want it to wash the whole track out. So it's, it's, that's just too big, you see. Just adds a bit of interest into the track there. Here's the original. Here's the new stuff. Okay, let's come to the bass now. The bass is interesting because the bass is a kind of a retro bass, and the problem with retro basses is that... Now, that's quite nice. The problem is, though, there's kind of some low-end information in there and also some top-end information, which is going to make it hard to sit in the mix in a, in a, in a, a much more cohesive way than I want it to. Let me play you at the moment when it, without any treatment on it. I've used Triple D now. Triple D is cool. Um, now, obviously, the first place that people get a head for to use it is, is vocals because it's got D boxy, D harsh, and D S. But I've been using it on this bass, and it's cool because what it allows me to do it allows me to just clean out some of the information that I don't want. Um, and so, let me show you it first with it off. I want to get rid of some of that top squelch, and I want to just tighten up that bottom end. Here we go. Here now, there's a lovely bottom end in there. Now the two that are really doing the work here. So that's doing that. That's doing some of the that top end clickiness. It's just making it a much richer bass. Let's take it back out. The problem was before, it's just a bit too jumpy, it doesn't sit very well. There's the original again. Past that. You see what I mean there? The squelching is nice, but it it it's just it, it makes it very hard to sit it in the mix. But the minute you add this in, just really tightens that whole bottom end up. See where we are now? That's all the stuff in, all of it out. again. Now the final thing is some reverb and I've used the reverb on uh, just really the overheads of the kit and the snare and let me just play you the kit first without it in and show you the reverb. Tiny bit. I'm on the medium room. There's the time pre delay, a short pre delay, but I love a bit of pre delay. Now the distortion's adding some colour in as well. There's the original. Now it might surprise you, I've put some on the kick drum. Now it just helps to sit it in the, in the, in the track. And then I put it on the overheads and the, the snare as well. There's a lot of it. 
Now the distortion really helps here as well. So that's too bright for me. Sort of colour it a bit, give it some more warmth. You can hear it there. And of course that's not... There's original. Now you might want to add some as well on the uh, the synth as well. It's quite nice. Let's hear it all again now without any stuff in. Here it comes. What I might do as well is just add a bit of compression on that snare because as the snare comes up at the end of the track, it sort of pokes its head to a little too far high above the wall and I'd just like to put a little bit of a, a limiter in there just to, so where that, without smashing it too hard. So as you could see I did a review last week but as you could see in a real world mix environment it's it's a really cool set of tools especially if you use the tools imaginatively and as I say often people would head for an EQ and, and a compressor on a kick drum or on a snare uh, or that kind of stuff and so it, it it's really good to, to be able to use these in, in in imaginative ways and as I say especially as well on this bass using the triple d to just take away some of that sort of uh that's okay but that that's really tied together now it's really got control of the bottom end got control of the top there so, very impressive. Go and try them out. Try them on your mixes. Let me know how you get on. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.